Has Hillary ever apologized for lying about her illegal email server and deleting 33,000 emails? She never tells the truth. One lie after another and getting worse with each passing day. This coming as the New York Times is reporting that Hillary Clinton told the FBI that Colin Powell advised her to maintain a private email server. The new details come from the FBI's notes handed over to Congress this week. Joining me right now is Fred Flights. He is a former CIA analyst and Center for Security Policy senior fellow. Good to see you, Fred. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here. Your takeaway on this latest comments from Hillary that she blames Colin Powell. I find a very unlikely Secretary Powell ever made such a recommendation. This email server is one of the biggest aspects of this scandal. It was an effort by Hillary Clinton to evade federal record laws and put her work-related emails beyond the reach of Congress and the courts. I don't think Powell recommended that, but even if he did, she's an attorney. She saw a similar scandal when she was in the Senate. She knew this was wrong. Yeah, well, it's pretty extraordinary when, when you look at how this has all come out. I mean, the FBI investigation into this, they didn't even record the interview with Hillary Clinton. I mean, you being formerly CIA, is that customary that you don't even have a... I mean, we've got these notes now, so we see that this is what she told the FBI, but it wasn't recorded. Uh, the interview that they did with, with Hillary Clinton, uh, and there was no transcript. I, I think the whole investigation stinks. It looks like the rules weren't followed. It looks like there are special rules when it comes to the investigation of a Clinton. Yeah, and Governor, people are wondering if, in fact, some of these agencies are, have become completely politicized. Well, I think it's very obvious they've become politicized, and I think what Fred was uh, alluding to, Hillary's an attorney, but the fact is, uh, and a lot of people need to realize this, when you're given a top security clearance, the FBI sits you down, because uh, I've had this happen when I was governor, they sit you down and they put the fear of God in you about what you can and cannot do with the information that you receive. Now, I know darn well she got that briefing. She probably had it when she was first lady, for heaven's sakes, but certainly as Secretary of State. Fred, how does she justify in any way that she just didn't know any better? I mean, that, that's, not, that's not plausible. That, that, that's right. It's not plausible. And I mean, I, I got to, just something I mentioned a moment ago, there was a scandal during the Bush years of NSC advisors evading federal record laws by using private, emails, private email. She was in the Senate. She remembers that scandal. She's probably one <laughs> of the senators who bashed the Bush administration for doing that. Wow. That's a good, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that out. Dagan, how do you see it? Uh, the, and there's also the story. It's actually the, the top story in the Wall Street Journal today that the Clinton family is going to scale back the foundation if she wins the election. And I just see the deep irony in that, that if it, if it was a conflict of interest, why did it exist and why was it used as essentially a slush fund in a money laundering operation while she was the Secretary yeah, of State? And she took an ethics pledge when she was Secretary of State about how the foundation was going to be handled when she was um, serving the American people and we saw how it was handled. Yeah, but that's no big deal to say they're going to not take any more money. My gosh, they've already shaken down every country on the planet. Who, who's left to go after? I mean, th they've pretty much uh, taken the Kirby vacuum cleaner to the pockets of virtually every donor that exists. Hundreds of millions of dollars have given about all the favors they can. So what's left? Mm. Well, they said they're not, they're not going to accept money from corporates, and they're not going to accept money from foreign governments, uh, Michael Yoshikami. But the question remains, if it was all fine, then why make the change now? What else are they going to do? I mean, really, they're in a position right now. They have huge criticism about what they've done in the past, as government, go Governor just said, and there's yeah. cer certainly concerns about that. I mean, at this point, I mean, yeah, we can say, yes, of course, it shouldn't have happened well, in the past. Well, it's a but. It happened. So the question is, what are you going to do going forward? So yeah. their statement is, we're not going to do it going forward. Is well, it, is, it is as good as being pure from the start? Or the voters Obviously will decide. Not. The voters well, will the decide. Voters. And the voters will, will go down, and history will, in, in fact, write this, this legacy. Uh, Fred, how do you see it? I mean, my question is, why is the foundation taking donations now? What foreign countries, what foreign companies are contributing money to a presidential candidate to this foundation right now to influence her future administration. The, the foundation should be shut down immediately. Hmm. Donald Trump expressed doubt over the intelligence community, and you agree in a newly published op-ed, you warned that there's trouble ahead for Donald Trump if he wins the election. Tell us about that op-ed and what challenges Trump faces. 
Well, I said in a National Review Online piece that ran yesterday that Mr. Trump is, uh, basically has some pretty good concerns about uh, the intelligence community. Bear in mind, a number of intelligence officers said he should not get an intelligence briefing because they say he can't be trusted. But they said nothing about Hillary Clinton, who actually violated security laws and regulations. But I also wrote about that bias within the intelligence community goes back many years. Remember, during the Bush administration, it was so bad in 2004 that the Wall Street Journal ran an editorial in September 2004 called the CIA's insurgency because of efforts to undermine Mr. Bush's reelection campaign. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that because the truth is, is you can't call out Donald Trump and question whether or not he's going to keep this information uh, secure and not mention what Hillary Clinton has already done. I, I, I think that's right. And, it, you know, Trump is the duly elected candidate of a major republic of a major political party. It's not the place of intelligence officers to say, "Well, I'm not going to brief him." They're second guessing the people who elected him. He might be president. The purpose of this briefing is to prepare him in case he wins the election. Yeah, Fred, great to see you. Thanks so much for weighing in. Good to be here. Fred flights there.